Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another fabulous and fantastic Ask an Engineer. We're broadcasting live from the uh, cluttered Adafruit headquarters in downtown Manhattan. I'm Lady Ada. I'm the engineer. And with me is Lady Becky. Hi. The Becky. That's my name. Uh, who will be accompanying me on this journey. This journey. Of Shut life. up! <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of uh, awesome stuff to show on the show, including some videos and products and pictures and projects. It's hey, a big show. We have a, a lot. Show. Yeah. All right, why don't you uh, tell them what's on tonight? All show. right, on tonight's show, the code is Apollo in celebration of us <laughs> landing on the moon like 43 years ago or something. Some giant amount of years. We will be talking about the show and tell. It was an awesome, amazing show and tell. We'll be going through all the projects. A little follow up about Little Bits, big news in the world of open source hardware and Little Bits. We'll talk about. Big, big announcement. Lady Ada getting it's involved me. with government. I'm the man. Yeah. <laughs> we finally named our, in, taxes. We finally inter- <laughs> named our Internet of Thing um, friendly cloud entity. We did an uh, interview with the <laughs> Spark Movement about Lego projects. We will talk about Ask an Educator, some new badges, some new badge requirement features, Part Finder Friday, Tyler's working on a cool project, Becky's doing a very cool workshop. We'll be showing some videos that Becky did and we're catching up for the last week. In the new product section, we'll debut Circuit Playground. We'll have some back-in-stock items. We'll have some new items that are in stock. We'll have updated items. We'll have items that talk. We'll have items that you iron on. We'll have items that talk to pies. We'll have other things that talk to pies. We'll have things you can type on. We'll have other things like light-up handlebars, things that you wear on your wrist that blink or scream or do something interesting. <laughs> LCD ah! screens, iPhone backings, melting plastic cards. Oh, no. All that and more and a cat. All on Ask an Engineer. And a judgmental cat. Yay. Whew. That's okay. a show we have This tonight. is a we show. we got to get started for sure, right? What? We're getting we started. We're, we're not gotta started. Get, we got to start right. with this the This is first a thing. show. Yeah. It's going to be fast paced. I'm going to be it. I'm going to be off camera telling you guys to go faster. So, anyways. You can see your hair a little bit. Yes. <laughs> the... The code is Apollo, 10% off um, most things in the Adafruit store, all the stuff that we make. Uh, use the code Apollo on checkout, and uh, you'll get 10% off a bunch of stuff. Okay, show and tell. It was a massive show and tell this week. We have more people than show and tell time. Okay, so who was on the show and tell? First one was Tyler. Tyler okay. Cooper, a Adafruit. member of the Adafruit team, showed up at the show and tell. He's um, uh, participating in this whole Red Bull creation challenge or whatever, and, the, and he has a big team of people in Minnesota, and they're working on... Um, a submarine simulator. That's right. It's like a, a ton of stuff. game. Uh, uses like valve control stuff. Okay, next up was um, Nathan. He is a young student who watched Ethan's quadcopter project and was inspired to make his own quadcopter. We said we'd give him a quadcopter badge when we see his quadcopter fly. That's right. I liked his his lighting setup. It was really nice. Yeah. A solid color background. Um, Victor Frost did something that I wanted, which was this. He took like a desk lamp arm and a. Um, rigged it so he could put his um, microphone on it as a like movable microphone stand, which I would like because I lean over to do my voiceovers sometimes. Mm. Pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. Um, and he showed us some other things. He wants to make an automatic car wash for his garage. Yep. And then um, James showed us his uh, Raspberry Pi radio project. Very cool project. We were just talking about that earlier today. Yeah. Another good example mm-hmm. project. Because we did the Raspberry Pi tutorial for using buttons with the GPIO and then um, also a volume control project yeah. just out yesterday. And yeah. he sort of like controlled switching radio stations, web stream radio Based stations. Based on Mighty Ohm's uh, Mata Router, Hacker Router <laughs> project, which is kind of an uh, awesome fun project if yeah. you want to make your own like uh, internet radio station project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Kevin was back with another uh, sort of electronics mashup, his a la mode board for Raspberry yeah. Pi, yeah. which um, has an Arduino... Uh, yeah. Compatible yeah, and we also had we also Justin had Shaw, Justin who is also in the same group as Kevin. I had him down here, sorry. And uh, he had this new board. You know a little bit more about this. It's just like Arduino with a bunch of stuff in it, yeah, and it plugs Arduino into this GPS, GPS thing. Clock. Yeah, I don't completely get it. And he it, made yeah. this really beautiful clock that showed his uh, him and his wife's anniversary. 19 years are married, and I said oh. that was the year of acrylic. Laser cut every, acrylic. Every year has a different um, element. 19. Yeah, laser cut acrylic. Yeah, so 19 years. Nice. So that's is embroidery. Okay, and... So that's, um, the, that's the show. And right, and Chris, um, he uh, tuned in and tuned out, but he has a really big update for um, the Rider Max Rider stuff. Net, yeah. Yeah, okay. Rider Net. Rider Cool, it's called. Swimming will never be the same, from what I've been told. Swimming? 
Change and swim in. He's got the pool. He's got he's got the he's automatic pool sort of thing. Yeah. Pool, pool, pool. Anyways, show and tell. Yeah, horses. Show and tell is no, massive. No, he's done with horses. Okay. Now it's down to water polo. Right? Yeah. Not horse polo. Sweet. <laughs> horses can swim. Um, so uh, one other thing, we're working on um, getting these made. This is the as seen on show and tell. The show and tell gets so popular, everyone wants these. So these are going to be stickers soon. So That'd anyone, yeah, everyone is on there. They're, it's going to be coming out soon. How does someone get on the show and tell Lady Ada? Super easy. Just go to my personal Lady Ada um, Google Plus page, and every week I post up and say, hey, come in here to get added to my Google Plus uh, circle, and then I'll add you because I cannot add um, everyone to the Hangout. It actually makes you add a circle, so you have to be in the circle of mine yeah. first. If you do public, we won't be able to do it. No, no, you yeah. can't. Remember, they, they made it so you can't add yeah. everybody. Yeah. It's, you can't do public hangouts anymore. You used to. Yeah, but then that'd be a circle. Somebody did something, and then they took it away. Yeah. And then once you're in the circle, <laughs> you can come to any show and tell. Yeah, you but want. you can come to any show and tell. Yeah. So anytime in the future. So you should just do it, when, you know, whenever. Yeah. And it's All free. Right. You don't have to pay for anything. Moving right along. Next up in open source hardware news. Um, last week, we had little bits on the show. That's right. I was, I was a fantastic guest. That was great. And uh, you want to, you, want to, you know what the big news is. What happened to little bits? Uh, she announced that she got funding. So yeah. uh, Not just funding. $3.6 she, she million. Did a, series, dollars. a Series A of $3.65 million, which um, was led by a whole bunch of, of uh high-end uh, investors, yeah. uh, including Joanne Wilson, who's an angel investor in New York, yeah. and uh, also, I think, Negroponte and Joey Ito from Media Lab. Yeah, and, but one thing worth mentioning, PCH is in the headline. In and PCH is part of it. And PCH is uh, the sort of behind-the-scenes hardware manufacturer for um, many startups, including the Pebble Watch, and I believe, and um, yeah. Chumbi. They helped Chumbi mm -hmm. out. I don't know if they helped Chumbi, Chumbi exactly. Maybe they did, but they're best known for making, like, uh, accessories for like iPhone, iPods, yeah, yeah, and like I think they do stuff for Barnes and Noble, but they can't talk I about it all the time. I think they did the Nook and the yeah. Zune, but I'm not. It's hard to tell. They, you know, they, don't, they can't say publicly. They can just say we worked on an e-reader, and we're like, okay. Yeah. yeah. You yes. have to guess. Which you have to guess which one. Oh, um, well, congratulations, Aya. I can't wait okay. to see little bits grow. So yeah, so this is really good. She's got a hardware manufacturing partner, which is great because yeah. she has a very small awesome. office and she's not interested in, in doing the, the very the high. I mean, she has to manufacture hundreds of thousands of these little bits. Um, she's coming out with more little bits. Uh, she also has some job openings because she has mm -hmm. funding. And so if you're interested in working on this really cool technology, check out the Ada for Jobs board. And or just go to littlebits.cc. Um, they're hiring an uh, electrical engineer, I think, or two. And maybe also like a couple of programmers. They got a lot of job openings. They have a lot of job openings. And now is a good time to go in because you can, um, you know, they have funding. They're good for uh, quite a while. And you don't have to worry about that. Um, they can afford to get top talent, it's and a cool project. you're going to see this project open source. get everywhere, and it's open source, which is yeah. cool. Okay. Um, next up, more big news. Um, this is for you. That's me. You're um, uh, on a city council now, and yes. you're City Economic Development Council. Yeah. What this is this is all the, about? This is the um, industrial business, wait, indus what is it called? The Industrial Business Advisory Council. Yeah. Otherwise known as IBAC. <laughs> uh, they love their acronyms. No, it's not. No, it's not. Acronyms. It's, it's, yeah. I just say that because it's funny. Uh, but so um, this council, we're basically, it's like a half dozen people, and we're you know we're nominated uh, to join this board, and it, it's it's not like a, it's not like a voting position, but it's basically we advise um, the you know the Bloomberg administration on basically how can they get more companies like. Adafruit, like yeah. MakerBot, like Little Bits, because right. they don't want to be as dependent on um, finance, because finance is such a big part of, in you know, in, in media, it's such a big part of um, New York City industry, and that's fantastic. But it also means that we're so dependent on the stock market. So when the stock right. market crashed, like you know, it did in 2008, um, like New York City economy really got hurt too, mm -hmm. and they don't like that because it, that sucks. Um, so they want to have more industry and there's a lot of food industry, so there's some people who do food on the board. Um, I'm on the board sort of doing the like electronics manufacturing, there's a couple um, ma uh, manufacturers, like Shapeways is um, in New York now, so there's like two 3D printing companies, um, Quirky, which is um, in Chelsea, and they do um, like sort of uh, crowdsourced. It's little bits, uh, Shapeways coming, MakerBot. MakerBot. Um, you know, New York City is, is for makers. Like, it's one of the, the capitals yeah. now. Um, Etsy. I mean, yeah. they're not really manufacturing, but they, they're yeah. part of this ecosystem. It's in, it's in there. So uh, it's really exciting, and I hope to, to convince them to do a couple things that could really help. Um, I'm going to be pushing them to not rezone all of the lovely uh, semi industrial spaces 
that are remaining in Manhattan, there, there are only a couple left, and they're slowly being zoned out right. and turned into <laughs> luxury hotels. And I'm like, we really love luxury hotels, but I'm not on the luxury hotel advisory council. I'm not on the industrial <laughs> advisory council. So, Maybe next time. Yeah, you know, anything they can do to, to keep this industrial... Foster industrial businesses. Yeah, keep the industrial space available, because, mm. you know, we... You know, with Adafruit Growth, we have to make sure that we're in a space that's zoned for what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, sorry, as we as we grow, we have to find uh, zoned spaces that are meant for the kind of work we do. Um, and it gets it gets harder and harder and harder. And that's why everyone ends up leaving for um, you know Long Island or Staten Island or you know outside of the city. Yeah. Yeah. Other states. New Jersey and points west. New Jersey okay. definitely has tons of industrial. We'll have more follow-ups <laughs> about that, but congratulations. Yay. Very proud so of you. So the first meeting is in a few weeks. Yeah. Cool. All right, next up. This guy has a name. Oh, oh hi, <laughs> yeah. guys. Yeah, this is the Internet of Things uh, logo that we came up with um, by uh, popular choice. Uh, Nimbus is the name. Okay. Oh, uh, it's Nimbus. Yeah. I'm going to get all your cloud data. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all backed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways. Okay, um, it's a cute logo. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have stickers. Um, Internet of Things is really hard to convey in an image. Um, this says it all. <laughs> it makes you giggle so awkwardly in the meantime. It's yeah. a big cloud that's hugging all your data. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Next up, you did an interview uh, with uh, the folks from uh, Spark where they kind of talk about getting more people, young people, yeah. involved with education. And this was about the Lego set. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh Sorry, um, oh, it's, still it's still late here. Um, yeah, so we go read this, but it's mostly about um, this Lego Cuso project that we're doing, where we're trying to get 10,000 votes to convince Lego to make a Lego hacker space. Lego project. hacker space, Lego pick and place, Lego laser cutter, Lego sewing machine, Lego Lego iron, Lego MOSFET the cat. Super yeah. cute Lego hacker. Please hack vote. So, so Lego we're hacker getting space. close to the next milestone, which is 2,000. So um, please. Uh, Put up a couple. Yeah, please. Um, after the show, please go over to the Lego site and and vote. It's um, yeah. adafruit.com/lego, and that has. Make the, a hotmail uh, account if you don't want them to be emailed. And um, we also have a little video to debut. This is a really short one. Um, we're electrifying some of the pieces yeah. in the Lego set. So here it is. We'll let this show run for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's what's going on. Yeah, you guys went crazy. We use those light bricks, um, LED, they're just like motion activated, so you like tap the laser cutter and oh, then it's cute. like blink, 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 blink. We added the Chills. sound, the okay. sound later. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, next up on the show, um, we have two things from Ask an Educator. We're not going to spend any time on these because we have to go fast. Um, Ask an Educator this week, how can I visualize what transistors and capacitors do? How can I measure the height of my model rocket? And then, uh, Becky, you posted up these. You want to talk about what these two things Sure, are? there's a new requirements document by Adam Kemp about how to earn yourself a Hackaday badge. And they posted it over on Hackaday, too. Um, yeah, post so, Hackaday. So click on it and find out it's how good. you can it's earn actually a good, It's a good step-by-step um, -step instruction on how to get anything submitted to a website. Yeah. A lot of people say, like, how do you get your stuff submitted to a website? It's like, follow these steps. Where yeah. you just do a good job explaining what it is, and you send them a big photo. And then look, it is on the internet. <laughs> yep, so we added that to the Adafruit Academy, adafruit.com slash academy. Yeah. And um, you can find it there with a whole bunch of other requirements documents for yeah, we have like ten. educating people yeah. about modern technology. And there's an update with the skill badges, which is the checkboxes. Checkboxes yeah. so that you can check off. Yeah. Great for things. educators. You know, all the Girl Scout badge requirements things had checkboxes. So. Yeah. yeah. As a we're, Girl Scout. We're four checkboxes here. All right. I'm four. I'm four. I'm not, I'm awesome. not against him. No, okay, no. next up. Lady, you had Part Finder Friday. You want to talk about this part? Yeah, so this Part Finder Friday, um, I uh, showed off the thing that's the PCA9685, which is um, an LED uh, slash PWM driver chip. And actually, I don't remember why I was looking for like a chip like this, but I was like kind of hanging on the NXP site, which actually they have a lot of awesome chips. You just have to kind of like spend some time on their site because they're like not very popular for some reason. Like, I just don't see, like, they're not, like, they're not always carried by DigiKey, so, like, mm -hmm. if you search on DigiKey or Mauser, like, they're not always there. You have to actually look, look on their site, and then they're, they're carried by, like, Arrow or Future. So, different distros. But um, the nice thing about this chip is it's a 16-channel PWM driver, so it can drive up to 16 PWM outputs, mm -hmm. which is way more than, like, even the Arduino. The Arduino only mm -hmm. has six, but only um, two of them are uh, high-precision, 16-bit. So this gives you 16 high-precision oh, PWMs. Okay. 
And the reason it's good to have precision is because it can do servo driving with high precision and like very, like high repeatability because it has like a very high precision timer. And the cool thing about um, it is unlike like a lot of people have been using chips like the uh, TLC 9, uh, 5940 and 5941. And the TLC chips are really nice because they're dip and they're easy to use, but you have to clock them and use a lot of pins. And you basically have to use like six pins, and one of those pins has to be a pin where you clock it constantly, which means basically like your Arduino or project can't do anything else. It's just sitting there and clocking right. it. Right. So the cool thing about this chip is it has an oscillator inside of it. So you basically say like, do this thing, like drive the server, drive these LEDs, and then like you're done. And so, um, and there's like seven address pins, so you can run like 90 of them at once on two I2C pins, wow. and as long as you can power it, you can basically control up to like, I think we calculated it was like a thousand PWM outputs, so I don't know, it's a lot. But I like this chip, it's um, it's surface mount only, and it's it's like T-SOP, it's, it's not a hard T-SOP chip to solder, but it, it is a uh, surface mount, we do have a breakout for it, but you know, if you're making a robot or something, this could be a good chip to end. Yeah, fun, you can make an animatronic face, who's that artist who did it? Made his oh, whole yeah. face with the Tim Hawkinson. Yes. Yeah. With the you motorized his like eyebrows and yeah. stuff. Good you, memory. Yeah. So you get a lot of servos, and this is what it'll be good for. Okay. I don't think you can um, Next up, just real quick on the blog, follow Tyler's progress on the um, show and tell. He showed the Red Bull challenge, and he's using all the Adafruit gear. Mm -hmm. It's on the blog. He'll have some more posts, and he's going to be using the Adafruit learning system to document it. He's building a submarine, basically. The, the Cooper brothers are overachievers. They're awesome. I love it. Okay. I love it, too. Yeah. Overachievers. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> club of our own. Speaking of, Becky, you're doing a workshop. Tell us about this workshop. I'm doing an EL Wire workshop um, here in New York City in Brooklyn, actually, at the Madagascar Institute. I want to show you guys how to make your own EL Wire or tape project. It's timed perfectly for Burning Man. So if you want to go to Burning Man, but you haven't thought of your any fun light-up costume ideas yet, um, you should, for your own safety, in the evening, consider wearing something light up so you don't get hit by a bicycle or a robot or something. Or an art car. Or an art car. Um, so you can come to my workshop. It's on August 4th. And um, we'll be using the Adafruit starter packs uh, for wire or tape. You can get any color you want. And um, you should walk out of there with your project at least mostly working. And we're doing it on a Saturday night, so um, we'll overlap with the show and tell a little bit. So at the end of our workshop, we'll sign into right. the show and tell and show um, the internet, all the fun projects. Yeah, we should made. do what we should do a Burning Man promotion so people can get EL from packs from us. You should, yeah. I mean, so I sent the class to the Burning Man list, but if you know anyone who wants to come, um, EL is really it good be because fun. it runs on batteries. It's not super bright, but um, it's bright enough. And uh, yeah, you definitely need to have something that you wear that's lit up because, yeah. like, especially after the man burns, it is like really dark and like I've almost hit like four people. Sure. I'm like, I, I'm looking carefully, but. Yeah, so it's wear like something light people up. People wearing black in a black desert with no lights in yeah. the middle of the night, and like if it's a new moon, it's really dark. You can't see. You can't so see anything. come to my workshop, and all material, you, like you get a starter pack, but then I'm also bringing a bunch more materials, so all materials are included. Like we'll, you know, some clear thread for sewing stuff on, and some adhesives, and I'll bring a couple examples of things like the sound activated driver if you want to have a disco dance party rave activated outfit. Okay, we're going to go into high speed mode in just a high moment. High speed mode, let's do um, it. First up, the code Apollo. Use Apollo code 10% off. Use it and get 10% off. Many things in the Adafruit store. Okay, you can set up this video. Um, last week I was on the show, so we're holding. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of stuff to get through. So this is yeah. the video that you made with your dog. The dog GPS project. Okay. Okay. Let's watch it. Please watch it. All right, let's here it is. Dog. dog GPS. By Becky Stern. I have a fun project in store for us today. It's a GPS dog collar that tracks how long you've walked using this GPS module and Adafruit's 32U4 breakout board. The GPS tracks your movement and a status bar fills up on the OLED display indicating how close you are to your goal. The 32U4 board does all the calculations and drives the screen, but your dog still has to do the walking. You'll also need a needle and thread, some scissors, and some wire edge ribbon. I found mine online, but they have plenty at your local craft store. Inside each edge of the ribbon is a tiny wire. It can be tough to grab, so I used a pair of pliers to help me pull it out, and then gather the ribbon along the wire. Use that last little bit of wire to wrap the loose end of the ribbon so it doesn't fray, and then that'll be the starting point of your flower. Follow the side you started to gather all the way to the other end of the ribbon and gather it starting at that end, building up to the knot at the side you just started. 
When it's gathered very tightly on that one wire, you can use the remainder of the wire to tie off as you did in the beginning and cut the excess wire. The ribbon will be sewed in a big spiral, so test fit your components to get the diameter of that very first circle with the end point meets the first round and hold it there until you can stitch it in place. Your stitches should grab onto that wire through the ribbon and you can continue around the spiral incorporating more and more of the ribbon. When you get to the end, just fold over the tail so the bare wire is not exposed and sew as normal. This hollow ribbon flower has room for my OLED display and the GPS module right in the middle. Since I already soldered headers on my OLED display, I'm going to use these jumper cables with female headers to connect it to the rest of the circuit. I can just rip off a section that's the right width for all of the headers on the OLED. Feed those wires through the center of the flower and also position the GPS unit and then stitch them in place with your plain thread through as many of the mounting holes as you can. For me, this is the two bottom holes on the OLED display, the two regular mounting holes on the GPS module, and also an unused pin on the GPS module to anchor the other side of the PCB. For all my wearables projects, I start on a solderless breadboard and build out from there. Then I usually duplicate the hardware with no header pins so everything's as small as possible. Without soldering, put the ISP headers inside your programmer and just hold them against the contacts of the programming pads to burn the Leonardo bootloader onto the 32U4 board. The code for this project is available on GitHub and after you've burned the new bootloader, you can load it onto your board with the USB cable. Check out Lady Ada's GPS tutorial as well as Tyler's comments in the code for this project to see how to hook up the GPS module to the rest of the circuit. Here I'm using solid core hookup wire because it'll form a rigid connection between this board and the 32U4 board, which will sit directly underneath it. Make your wire connections and then solder and clip off the excess leads. Cut off and save one half of the ribbon cable connecting to the OLED display and start making those wire connections. Before worrying about batteries, I like to test the circuit on a trusted power source like a USB port or a benchtop power supply. Next, take this 3 AAA battery holder and a scrap of fabric and pin and sew a pouch for the battery holder in the fabric. This scrap will wrap around the dog collar and hold both the batteries and the flower design to the collar. Next, connect the power and ground from the battery holder and solder those connections. Check to see that your circuit works before anchoring it to the fabric through the mounting holes on the 32U4 board. Wrap the entire fabric, battery holder included, around the dog collar and stitch it on with a whip stitch. You could just as easily use Velcro tape if you'd prefer. To change the program, switch off the battery pack, plug in the USB cord, and set your goal in miles in the Arduino sketch. I didn't really like how brightly those red LEDs showed through the flower, so I used some black nail polish to blot them out. You could also use a piece of electrical tape. And later on, if I want to use these for a different project, I can just use some acetone to take off the nail polish. There are lots of things that you could do with this project, and I encourage you to try it out and share the results. For instance, you could use the onboard data logging capacity to map your dog's walks every day. I hope I've inspired you to go out and make your own GPS project, and I can't wait to see it in Adafruit's weekly show and tell on Google+. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. All right, great video, Becky. Dang. What video? Maybe you missed my dog. Oh. <laughs> Here's your dog yeah, right virtual now. Dog. I'm going to see her in a little bit. Okay, so that was a pretty intense project. Yeah, so, you, so you... Tyler Cooper wrote all the code. Okay. It was really good, um, and uh, it was really fun and easy to build. And okay. uses the OLED display, which we also have an update for tonight. And uh, everyone can use the tutorial on the new Adafruit learning system yeah. if they want to make their own dog GPS. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. Please do. Okay, one quick thing. Coach Paulo. Mm-hmm.
10% you've got off anything. Ten per- to get 10% off many things. All right. Like now right. we're including gonna, some of those things that are, you require to make the dog GPS project. We're yes. going to go through really a, a marathon session because we have two weeks of new products because we skipped last week. So are, are you guys ready? I'm going to play Eye of the Tiger to get it ready. Is, it more? is. It, uh, we can't play it because then we won't be able to upload the Can video. I hum it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because <laughs> no, I'm a detector. Only Creative Commons think you can hum. <laughs> 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 Anyways, so here he is. It's new product time. All right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, new version of uh, Circuit Playground. Huge update. 1.5. It's not even like 1.2. It's just we want to switch to 1.5. We want to switch to 1.5. Okay. Uh, what are these things on the screen here that this people should a- be most concerned about? <laughs> Um, we now have not only microcontroller, ABR, breakout, um, pinouts, we also have uh, single, dual, and quad op-amp pinouts, which is handy because I can never remember which one's the positive in and which one's the negative input. So that's handy, so we have uh, op-amp pinouts. Okay, next up. You can also uh, now click on the component you want to change the value of, which is handy if you don't want to have to, like, Correspond the mm-hmm. name with the bottom text. That's kind of nice. Nice. Nice right. UI and update. Um, we also have uh, some update to the circuit calculator just to make it a little easier to use them. So just basically user interface design updates for the LED calculator and other calculators. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, the biggest update is now we have eight different um, op amp calculators. Well, seven because the buffer one is just like V in equals V out. Um, we have a standard buffer diagram, we have inverting and non-inverting amplifier, we have a summer um, integrator, differentiator, uh, diff amp, and a basic current source. So these are like the eight most popular non-filter um, op-amp topologies, like really handy. And like I, I always like like you know, space out on like, oh, for like a summer, or like what is the, is it like more like the inverting or the non-inverting? So this is really handy. So like if you're doing like any kind of um, op-amp projects, you can use the pinout um, mm-hmm. uh, part to you know, show you how to connect it. And then um, the calculator's here, which will tell you like basically what, what the V out. And I'll do some basic like, the calculations for you, like RC time constants and stuff. So that's really good. Handy. Okay. And I'll, uh, I'll do the next couple. So this one, I'll get rid of the cam here. Um, the next big feature is the show and tell feature. So just like we have the video show and tell on Google Hangout, now we have a photo show and tell directly from your iPhone or iPad. So you could take a picture of what you're building using mm-hmm. Circuit Playground to help you or just any project you have, and you just click show and tell. It could take it from your photo library, or it can take it from your camera right there, and it sends it to us. Um, you have uh, the menu item there. You can take a photo. This is the pie plate that we are working on here. And then uh, customers are already sending us stuff. It's awesome. You, yeah, you got one like the day it came out. Um, within an hour of the update, someone already people started already sending awesome. um, great updates. That's cool. So um, do check it out, and don't forget with um, Circuit Playground, the cost of the app is a coupon code, so it's kind of free, even yeah, though it costs two ninety nine. Yeah, it's two ninety nine, but you get two ninety nine coupon. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna keep moving. We got so much stuff here. Okay. Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah. Back. Updated. Back in stock. We have the Motor Party Pack. Back in stock now with oh, yeah, back in um, stock. the new yeah. um, updated. Well, we have to show that. We have to make more, but we have right. the new stepper. So yeah, the new stepper the, motor. Yeah. There it is in the upper right hand corner. That's back in stock. Right. Okay. Next up, back in stock. We also have the 1.8 inch uh, TFT breakouts. Super uh-huh. popular. We we and parrots. We put those back in stock. Yeah. We also mm-hmm. have the 1.8 inch inch TFT shield version, which is also really popular and is awesome, comes with uh-uh. not only um, a parakeet or whatever the hell that is called, <laughs> but also uh, a joystick button. You can kind of see the, the black knob, which um, you could read using one analog input, SD card, a display, super awesome. We also have the 2.2 inch TFT mm-hmm. breakout, um, a bigger noise. version. Uh, well, they do, but they just talk quietly. Um, <laughs> uh, with roses, uh, so we have a bunch of. We're getting all these displays back in stock. We were out of stock for a couple. Okay. Days. Next up, back in stock. More back in stock stuff. Any TV. We have the any TV packs back in stock. So if you want to like hack your television and like do some awesome man in the middle HDMI stuff, um, this board is awesome. It has two HDMI ports, uh, Wi-Fi, and in the middle is an FPGA. Sweet. Uh, neat. This is new and updated. This is an updated. So we had um, power adapters uh, before, but we wanted to get them from our uh, UL uh, certified supplier, and so we asked them to basically make a, a, the, this power adapter, um, and it's basically a USB power adapter. But what's cool about it is it's one amp of output. It has the resistors for the iPad and iPhone, so you can charge your iPad yeah. or iPhone on, off of it. 
and it will recognize all around travel all around great travel and it's got um 5.25 volt output which is really great because for a, a lot of these adapters they give like 4.9 volt to 4.8 volt ah. output which is good enough to charge batteries off of but not good enough to uh, you know not to run something directly off of it so for example if you want to run um your raspberry pi which comes with a us you know you can power it with a usb cable um, there's a little bit of protection circuitry and there's a voltage drop and um, the voltage drop can make USB accessories not work because right. they want five volts. Yeah. So by the time it gets to the cable and through, I think there's a, like a diode or something or whatever, um, the, the voltage drops just enough that um, it, can, it can add flaky behavior. So people have actually posted up about like, yeah, you really want this adapter that has just a quarter volt more. So by the time it gets to it, it's like five volt perfectly. Uh, will this work with, Pi. yeah, Raspberry Pi will work with an Arduino? It'll work with anything. Um, it, anything that wants five volts in, you can use. Uh, we're, we're, we sold out of like, yeah. we've had a shipment of 500, we sold out instantly, but we are getting another shipment in um, very okay. soon. Uh, new and updated, sort of. Uh, Suguru, they did some... Suguru did a packaging update, yeah. so nice. now um, it looks really cool. They also, uh, yeah, they have these lovely um, packages, which is great. You can actually see the Suguru. There's less Suguru, but it's also less expensive. And the Suguru comes in primary color, so you can now mix them more easily to make um, other, other Sugars. Yeah. I love that okay. Suguru. Moving right along. We're going to show the back of this, and then when we show the front of it, it's going to talk. So why don't you okay. tell everybody what this is? <laughs> this is the uh, new Joe Grand um, designed Parallax Emic Texas Heat converter. So this is a really nice Texas Speech chip, and they wrapped it up with a Freescale chip, and uh, basically put it on a breakout board, and you can send it serial data, and they'll speak it. And what's really cool is. You have to send it phoneme data, which is a lot of text-to-speech uh, chips yeah. are like, you have to send it phonemes, which is like um, like so talking, talking moose. So you have to spell it out in a weird way. Right. But you so can you, just send it like strings. Yes, yeah, so you can actually send it strings, and it actually has like an English and Spanish dictionary. That's so cool. it can convert the text to phonemes, and it does a quick, pretty good job. So that In the English and Spanish. Yeah. And we hear a talk, Phil? Yeah, we're going to hear a oh. talk now. So here it is. Um, well, there you have a talk. We, we want to Hello, everyone. My name is Emmett, too. I am the next generation text-to-speech module created by Grand Idea Studio. I can whisper very quietly. I can change to one of nine voices. For example, from Paul to Harry. To the news. So yeah, it has a really good it has a really good voice in my opinion. I mean for text to speech, like I was like, this is really nice and, and this is their second revision, so they're very good at designing nice. this sort of stuff and um, this is a really nice chip. It's used for like you know, voice systems where they can't afford to have a computer to do all this stuff for them, so that's cool. Okay. And next okay. up, uh, so next Pi up. badges are in. We have Pi badges. They yeah. are gorgeous. Do you want to show it on the overhead? Yeah, we'll show it to the overhead. We'll do the show overhead it. stuff. Okay. I mean, the photo looks really good, too. Yeah, we'll show the photo. Yeah, they're really good. Um, but yeah, this is the uh, overhead, and you can see it's shimmery, and it's beautiful, and we've got permission from the Raspberry Pi team to make this. Yep. Um, we sent them a whole bunch, and a portion of the proceeds goes to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. That's well. right. And here's, look at this beautiful photo that Becky took. Look at that. Look at oh, that. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's, the that's red beautiful. really picks up. Yeah. Alrighty, next up. Um, the cobbler is back in stock. Yeah, back I think they're just out of cobbler. stock, or I don't know if they're doing it. But anyways, we have them back in stock. Um, a totally awesome accessory for anyone wanting to hack on your Raspberry Pi. We were struggling for a long time on how to do stuff with the Raspberry Pi, and I thought, well, should we use, like, female to male jumpers, or should we use, like, some sort of shield thing? But in the end, um, I think, like, we all brainstormed, and I don't know who came up with this idea, but whoever did is a winner, because it was totally, everyone was like, oh, yeah, that's totally the right idea. Yeah. And so, so that's it, what we made. Breadboarding for yeah, your so you Raspberry Pi. Yeah, easily breadboard. Yeah. And I have a, I have it uh, to show here also. We'll yeah. We'll show it on the next We're going to go to the next reason. one. So this is the, one of the so projects. So just a photo of it. Yeah, yeah, I just stuck yeah, some yeah. on a breadboard. So you can see how you can attach the pie to a breadboard, and the breadboard can, um, you know, doesn't have to be next to it. It can, it can be a couple inches away, which is kind of nice. All right, and then we've got this new chip that goes along with yeah, the Yeah, so I also uh, decided to carry the MTP3008, which is uh, a low-cost DIP, eight-channel analog input um, uh, converter chip. So the, the Raspberry Pi does not have analog inputs. Um, however, it does have... Um, uh, like plenty of GPIO, um, SPI, and I2C, and so this is um, a chip that's really easy to do bitbang SPI with. It works down at three volts, which is what the Raspberry Pi runs off of, um, and it can have it has eight channels and it can do them really fast. So this is a really like super easy way to like you wire it up, it uses like four pins, and like kabam, you have eight analog inputs, 
And um, I wrote the Python code so that people can just like, you just copy paste the Python code in, and then you just read from the channel, it'll give you the 0 to 1023. So you can work with all kinds of sensors, right? Yeah, so now you can use like pretty much like any sensor because it's I2C, uh, has SPI, and now this is an easy way to add analog. Sweet. Yeah. Some all for just like a chip. It's Yeah, it's only a couple bucks. It's super easy and yeah. like. You want more? Like add another chip, and then you only need another CS line. Okay, the chip side, so you can add another eight analog inputs, and only takes one more pin. Mm -hmm. um, there's also like we'll have you know analog digital converters that are higher um, precision, but yeah. like ten bits is good for like yeah, most that's things. awesome. So yeah. we have a tutorial that goes with that too, right? So yeah, we yeah. do. Potentiometer with. Yeah. We do, it, we, do we, have a, we have a tutorial on the new um, tutorial system yeah, that shows how to wire it up. To it, so. Yeah, let's hop over cool. to it and we can okay, show Okay, look at this awesome yeah. tutorial system. So um, the tutorial is basically uh, for a potentiometer and uh, since we showed how to play MP3s, which is just, I thought would be a really popular project, um, uh, uh, part of a project. So this part shows you like how to look at the data sheet, um, how to extract the data from the data sheet on how to do the wiring, a wiring diagram. Um, do you want to click on the wiring diagram at the bottom? At the bottom? Yeah, just click on it. That's no, that's the, that's the data right. sheet. Just okay. hold on. Oh, this one? Yeah. So yeah. you can see the nice big photo of how to wire it up. It's really easy. Um, and I have a potentiometer, but you know you can use like FSRs or... Um, PR motion sensor? A PR motion sensor I can actually acts like a switch, but um, a distance sensor acts like an analog. Sensor. So like a sharp oh, distance yeah. sensor. Um, temperature sensor, and then this is all the code. This code, you know, it has a lot of stuff in it, um, and it's a gist, so you can just grab it, uh, clone it directly from GitHub. Wait, obviously. does our learning system pull in live code as a gist? Yes. How's that possible? It uses the gist. Oh my gosh. Um, ah. And the cool thing is, is that because it's a gist, you can, uh, if you, you don't even have to copy and paste it, which is kind of like annoying sometimes, you can actually just log into your Pi and do a git clone procedure, and it will just like automatically appear on your computer. Look at that. Nice. And what's also Great is oh my gosh look there's a full PDF version of this thing that you can print out and the gifts come into that too I don't believe it yes it's I amazing. believe it Phil yeah, I know because it's here on the screen otherwise it's watching it nice work for those PDFs yeah. so you have to do that PDF awesome. update okay uh, so I have this here and I thought I would just show it really okay, fast because right. well I get to demo the ADC chip and the Pi yeah. and uh, the potentiometer so oh can you get rid of the uh, the Person box is giving me one. No, no, the onion. Onion. Nope. there you go. Um, so I got my <laughs> pie here, and then this is the breadboard, and I've got my cobbler connected up to this ADC chip, and then here's the potentiometer, and I'm just hooking it up to my speakers. It's actually not meant to drive headphones, um, so I'll have it here, and then maybe you guys can switch yeah. to the. Okay. You go ahead so. and do your thing. I can turn it down. There you go. That's a good volume. And I can uh, turn it down. So this is using uh, Python to call, uh, to read the potentiometer through the chip uh, using the GPIO um, Raspberry Pi procedure. And it's very fast, actually, because they've optimized it. It now is, like, fast enough that you can, like, it, you know, I think it's, like, near Arduino speed of, of analog digital reading. And then it calls the mixer to um, set the audio. And it's just so simple. It's super easy. And I love how... Um, you have the power of um, embedded Linux, but then you can twiddle pins just like in Arduino. So I thought this was a really cool project showing off how to do analog inputs. Okay, well, we still got we got a lot of we got a long we got a long journey. <laughs> but that okay. was the longest that. demo. That was the longest demo. Yeah. Next up, more keyboard. stuff. Keyboard um, we got the, combined. We got these really cute little wireless uh, keyboard trackpads. Somebody sent us a link and was like, "Hey, this would be really great for like Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone because it's small, it's portable, it's wireless, and it doesn't use Bluetooth." You use one USB port for both mouse and keyboard. Yeah, you use the mouse and keyboard, and it's recharged with a rechargeable battery inside, and then we sold out, so I don't have any show. But we'll have more later. Okay. Next up, updated product. Um, yeah, we uh, the, the stepper motor, we used to carry the 12-volt stepper motor. Um, unfortunately, it got discontinued. So we got these um, uh, 1 16th geared down uh, stepper motors. They're a little bit less expensive, so that's nice. They're really easy to use. Um, they're 1 16th geared, so you actually get more precision and torque. It, they're actually comparable to, uh, they're, they're much stronger than the ones we had before, and um, they have a flattened shaft, so it's really easy to attach to them. Cool. And uh, they have little, like, attaching knobs on the side, which I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, they're good starter steppers, and so we put them in the motor starter pack. They're really easy to use. Okay, right. and then Becky, you want to talk about these? Oh, sure, we're going to do this now. I made some yeah. LED handlebars. So there was this guy on the internet in March and made the rounds, the... Um, he, he's a design student in Massachusetts um, who 
put LEDs inside his handlebars, and we thought that was a really cool project, but um, I don't want to cut my handlebars, it kind of, it like ruins the structural integrity of that, but we have all this LED strip, so I, um, at Lamore's suggestion, made LED handlebars with our LED, our cool white LED strip. Yeah, um, we have this super ass bright LED strip, so super, we're like... That's the technical term, super ass bright. It is, that is, it says on the data sheet, it is, it says like <laughs> brightness, yeah. super ass. So <laughs> we also made a pack, a project pack for this, so like this is one meter of tape fits perfectly on this But I like this because bars. this is like facing forwards. Yeah, and, and like lots of like people the, are like, oh, the spiral design is going to blind you, and it kind of ruins your night. But this is nice because down, it, it actually points it exactly where you're going, so as you're turning. forward and down, and only a little bit up, so... Um, that's really fun, and um, I made a video it's bright. I mean, you all can about. See it. Like it, it actually lights you up. I know. I know. It's bright. <laughs> and, uh, when I ride my bike, like it yeah. lights up my whole body, so it's you can good, see me. It's a good starter soldering project because it's like super simple. Um, it's a good bike project because you know if you just connect the battery pack, it, it just still work. I mean, you can still use the handlebars. Yeah, exactly. You can leave them off. It's you can fine. leave them off, um, uh, and you can, you know, and then you just have this battery pack, and we just use like AA batteries, so it's easy. Yeah. So I made a video about how to make it. So okay. I would let's let's like watch a video. I'd like to show that to you. Yeah. I'm going to um, Tour de France. Yeah. Real okay, quick, great. before we show the video, though, I want to pop back over to the um, learning system because we have oh, the full tutorial here with everything. Oh yeah. my goodness! It's yeah. all there. It's all here, so you can um, see everything that you're about to see in the video, um, but in tutorial form. It's all written so, down there for your convenience. Yeah, so we're going to go to the video. Okay. Today I'd like to show you how to add LEDs to your bicycle handlebars. This project was inspired by Mitchell Silva, who designed glow bars, handlebars with LEDs inside. But today we're going to use Adafruit's LED strip to put on the outside of our handlebars. Let's get started. You'll need one or two meters of cool white LED strip, depending on your design, a waterproof DC power cable pair, an 8 times AA battery holder, and various sizes of heat shrink tubing. To make the battery bag, you'll need some fabric, some tablecloth vinyl, as well as scissors, thread, and needles, which you can pick up in the Adafruit store. Start by laying out your LED tape on your handlebars. One meter will cover a strip along these drop bars, while I'll use two meters on my own bike to do a spiral design. We'll store the batteries right underneath the top tube with a wire leading up to the handlebars. Locate the center of your LED strip and cut away around the solder pads with an X-Acto knife. Solder the red lead on your power cable to the positive solder pad and the black wire to the negative. Slide a large piece of heat shrink tubing over the whole joint and shrink it with a lighter. You can also add a zip tie and epoxy to provide strain relief at this delicate junction. Solder the other part of your power cable to the battery holder having first slid a piece of heat shrink tubing over each wire and another larger piece of heat shrink tubing to cover those after you've shrunk them. To get your handlebars ready, remove any handlebar tape that may be on them now and thoroughly clean your handlebars so they're free of oil, adhesives, or rust. Center your solder joint right in the middle of your bike's handlebars and trim the paper backing to expose the adhesive on the LED strip. Then affix it to your handlebars in the design you like. You may need to trim off some extra LEDs with some flush snippers. Power them up and make sure they work before you go any further, and then whip out the secret ingredient. It's clear handlebar tape. I found it on Amazon and it's pretty easy to work with. Start at the ends of your bars and work towards the center. When you get there, cut off any extra and tape up the joint with the tape included or some black electrical tape. I also added a zip tie here to make it extra strong. Over on my own bike, I also taped the power cable to the brake line to prevent the cable from flopping around while I ride. Oh, I got some batteries. Let's see. Let's try that out. Oh man, that's really bright. Having been sufficiently blinded, it's time to make the battery bag. Measure the circumference of your top tube and lay out some fabric. Put some Velcro tape down and then measure from the edge of that to your circumference measurement, then add one more Velcro tape's width and cut a rectangle out from your fabric. Use the battery holder as a rough guide for the other dimension of the rectangle, plus a little bit of seam allowance you'll use to hem those edges of the fabric. Cut and hem another piece of fabric and line the two pieces up right sides together. Then stitch a line right down the middle. One of these pieces will grip the battery holder and the other one will grip the top tube of the bicycle. And the one with the battery holder we want to make waterproof. 
So pull out your tablecloth vinyl and cut a piece to match the size of that side. Cut some Velcro tape to length and peel and stick it in position so that when the flaps overlap, the Velcro will grip. Whenever you're working with vinyl in the sewing machine, you can use a piece of scrap paper between any of the moving parts and the vinyl to prevent it from binding up. Then you can peel off the paper along the perforations made by the needle. Also add Velcro to the flaps that will go around the top tube and stitch it in place. The battery holder needs something to cinch the ends shut, so I used some embroidery floss which I threaded in the needle and then sewed through the hem of the flap of the battery holder side of this whole thing, and then I can use that as a drawstring to cinch the end shut. You can route the wires so that they go along with your brake lines and then Velcro the top tube piece onto the bicycle. While I wouldn't call this design completely waterproof, it certainly won't blow up if you get stuck in a sudden shower. And if you want to ride without your lights on, just disconnect the power cable and either tuck the plug into the pouch or remove it completely. So that's it. I can't wait to see your LED bicycle projects in the Adafruit Flickr pool or on our weekly show and tell on Google+. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. So LED handlebars. I think them. I think it's cool that like there's there's two styles. Like I like this style because this is like the front style and you yeah, like I the like full the, body. Yeah, I like the No, I like this style too. Yeah, you style. Okay, but well, you have to experiment. <laughs> like there's two options. Yeah. Like, you know who knows? Yeah. Like, this, and is, I mean, this, is, this is using a little bit less, but it's not as bright. Right. It's not as crazy bright. But I had a, a good experience where the other one actually because it does throw light up at me. It illuminates my whole body and makes me very visible when I'm riding my bike. And when you were here in New York City, like getting hit by cars, I ride my bike like people are trying to kill me. Which is so, mostly true in Brooklyn. Yeah, so um, it works great. The The spiral design is a little bright, but I can still see. But, but if you're cool worried about that, use this one. It, it, it shines forward yeah. and down, and one meter is a perfect amount for a I like this. But um, another thing is, is I like also, like, it, like, it, like, as you turn, like, the light follows you. Yeah. But also, um, you know, it's not, like, a permanent thing. So you can unwrap the tape. Because like people unwrap the bars all the time. Like I, part of the reason, that, yeah. Like I needed new handlebar tape on my bike anyway when we did this project. So like you rewrap re your handlebars all the time. Yeah. And um, if you don't want to ride with the lights on, just unplug it. It's That's easy, easy. And they stay there. All right, so this is a really cool project. I really like this project. They can't really get stolen unless your whole handlebar gets stolen. And then like all people right. only sell bike stuff to steal. So to we're going it's too to. Weird to steal. Um, exactly. Yeah, and you can make the electrified version later. Um. So uh, we might run over a couple minutes on the show, but we still have a lot of money right products. Yeah, okay, we're going. Okay. We're zooming. All right, All so right. next up. Is that one SMA or RPSM? F -R -P -S -M -A? I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> we got more new products. I'm actually, what are these things? So these are adapters. <laughs> they are adapters. And basically, if you're doing Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz, um, the uh, antennas and adapters are all RPSMA, so that, um, which is looks like that. Um, and if you're doing cellular stuff, you have SMA adapters. But some old Wi-Fi stuff or some like high-powered Wi-Fi stuff is SMA. And some cellular antennas you might end up getting are the other way and blah, blah, blah. So basically, there's two standards. And this adapter will adapt between the two. So if you want to connect like an antenna that's SMA to a Wi-Fi adapter, you can use one. And if you want to use an RPSMA antenna, with like a cellular thing, you can use the other or Sounds great. whatever the hell because it's really hard to desolder um, SMA like onboard connectors. They're ah. like they're like attached to a circuit board. You cannot so use remove them. These adapters. So these are super easy adapters, and like we're gonna be doing more wireless stuff. So I want to toss this in the store. All right, next up we got some RFID stuff. Yeah, here. RFID. Yeah, this is just a bracelet, yeah. and it's just a bracelet. So this is um, a bracelet with the um, S50 MyFair tag inside of it. It's got a 1K EEPROM. Um, uh, basically uh, NFC RFID tag so you could program it to show up like a URL when you when you pass it by your phone or something um, you could do it for like a party or something I don't know I just thought like it would be cool to have a couple different um, types of mm -hmm. okay. tags and we have keep tags and card tags and we have bracelet yeah. tags. Alright now we got some readers. Uh, yeah this is a um, this is an interesting reader so this is we have um, a really awesome um, uh, uh, NFC RFID shield but the problem is um, you have to build an enclosure. You have to build an enclosure, or like maybe you just want something simple, or maybe you have a microcontroller project and you just want to use like PS2. So this is a PS2 
reader. Or, you know, an uh, old computer or something. Like, you can... Let's see if I can power this You out. can plug this with a lot of... You oh, can use there you go. Um, sorry, I had to plug power it Power over Ethernet? No, 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 it's, 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 it's PS2. So it uses two pins on, on an Arduino, and you can just use the PS2 keyboard sample. And it's nice because it's, like, all finished and ready. Yeah, so for some like projects, stick it on a door or whatever. Yeah, if you have, like, you know, if you want to do a project where it's, like, oh, like, you know, swipe your card to get a beer or something, this might be a nice, like, nicer than just having, like, this board hanging out. The only thing about it that is um, different than to compare it is you can't read the contents and you can't write the contents of the tag. Uh, you can only read the four, the permanent four bytes ID. And, uh, you know, it beeps. It, yeah, just for reading. It's pretty simple. It has a little blinky light. Uh, you can open it up and remove the beeper. It's just like literally just two wires. You just cut them and it'll, it'll stop beeping. And you can remove the LED too. But um, so it's kind of, you know, it's basically just a nicer version of the RFID reader, but it doesn't do any kind of NFC stuff. It doesn't read or write the tag contents. It's only for reading the MyFair tag ID. So it's not like for mm -hmm. high security stuff. It's just for like, hey, like I want to give out a bunch of tags and like each tag is a permanent ID and they can read them. Yeah, it's sure. pretty simple. But I thought it would be a nice addition. Okay, next up, more stuff. It's never ending. Stuff unfolds. Yeah. Okay. It's stuff unending. So we've got this new yeah. awesome little um. Oh, that's the screens. Yeah. Updated yeah. 16 by 2 OLED. These yes. Are these are beautiful. Yeah. Let me actually just show them on the screen because the thing is, is that they actually look so much better in real life. We know this. Yeah. Let me see if I can so bright. If it can focus. There, I did it. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, let me so reset good. it. I used the earlier version of this display for the job yeah. GPS. Yeah, we, uh, we have an SPI version, and this is the new i squared c version. So this is good for, um, you only need two pins to talk to it. It's a little bit slower than the SPI, but um, our code uh, does great. It's the same size and shape, basically, as the SPI one. We just want to have two options because one does SPI, one does i squared c um, if you have like a chip that you, you know doesn't, you don't want to use the SPI bus for it, um, but you have I squared C, like it's really easy. So yeah, it's like works great. Everything's perfect, I and like that uh, it's super display. super bright and lower power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very easy to use. Um, next up, since we started stocking tools to take apart iPhones, we've got these backings. So here's. Photos of them. Yeah, the photos look much better than holding them up. So we have and the then, mirrored yeah. one, the clear one, which clear is our one. favorite. You and can see then inside of your iPhone. We also wanted to get the, um, the black one, the black one, yeah. which was the first photo you showed, yeah, you can hold which is the up. the. Um, <laughs> you can see this one. <laughs> so you just saw beautiful photos. Let me show you the much smaller. Yeah, and no, they're really here. They're um, real. This one's clear. I was wearing it as glasses. And there's a couple earlier. photos, and then we're going to show a video. So what are these photos here? Because you did a project along with taking the backings off. Yeah, so um, Waz sent us some of her Charlie cards, which is the RFID Boston Transit Pass. New York City still uses the Max Stripe reader. And, um, lame. Lame. And um, uh, I saw a guy online uh, from London who dissolved his Oyster card, which is also an RFID Transit Pass, in acetone, which melts the plastic away. Um, and pulled out the antenna, and he embedded it in a resin ring. And I figured, since while while we're changing out the backs on our iPhones, we might as well try to take that tag and put it inside your phone, so that in order to go on the Boston metro, what do they call it, the tube, the T, the T, the Boston T. I know, sorry. Um, then you just hold your phone up to the reader, and it'll. That's why it's called Charlie. Okay, Charlie so we're gonna show yeah. another video. It's really easy to change the back plate on your iPhone 4 or 4S, and today I'm gonna show you how. There's two screws on the bottom of the phone. Just unscrew those, they're either Phillips or Pentalobe. Then slide the back plate up and tilt it off. You can replace it with a plain black plate, suitable for laser etching. A clear plate so that you can see all the inner workings of your iPhone. Or a mirrored plate, comes in handy when you want to see if you have something in your teeth. We also carry both screwdrivers you might need for this mod, and the USB microscope can give us a nice close-up of it in action. Once both screws are removed, it's really easy to just slide the back plate up and then lift it off of the back of the phone. Replacing it with your new plate is just as easy. Just slide the notches into the grooves, slide the back plate down, and reaffix the screws. We wanted to try to put this RFID transit card inside the iPhone, but the plastic was too thick. You can dissolve the plastic away with acetone and then remove just the antenna and chip from the plastic mess and put that inside the phone. 
Although the wire looks bare, it's actually enameled antenna wire and won't short out anything inside your phone. So I hope you enjoy your new customized iPhone. Don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel here on YouTube and I'll see you next time. Okay, so we, that was it. That was the video. Come back to us, Bill. Okay. Okay. Hello. Okay, okay. we're back. So okay. yeah, that's a good project. So what we learned was, because we've never done this before, so this was an experiment. We learned that the, the tag, um, it definitely worked out of the, we, we could scan it while it was outside of the uh, Yeah, phone. easily, very easily, um, because it's basically just the tag without the plastic around it, and the wire's coated in enamel, so even if like the antenna wires wiggle a little, it's fine. But we, we put it right inside the iPhone the way it was, rectangular, which I do show in the video right before we show it, the way yeah. we did it afterwards. Um, it doesn't Yeah, because the, the metal, it, basically what, the way these um, RFID tags work is it's basically like... Um, the the radio waves come through and they in, induce current to go through the chip. Yeah, to go through the chip and that actually charges it up, just like you know, like there's these it like spits out its data. Yeah, well, it changes the yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> the way that's the way I think about it. You give it a little bit of energy boost. Yeah, basically, you're getting it's getting energy from it. It's kind of like you know those little um, dongles that you put on a cell phone that blink when the phone gets a message or yes. gets a phone, phone call. It actually, it's the same thing. The problem is, is that. Um, yeah, it's basically inductive. Well, it, yeah, it's actually an antenna. The problem is that when you have metal near it, um, it soaks up the that electromagnetic field yeah. from the reader. So, so you have to, and then the battery is a gigantic chunk of metal. Right. So you have to space it off. So um, taking some paper. Yep. Well, yes, this is one scientific post-it note with four layers of scientific packing tape. <laughs> but you can put more, you know, you can put, I think even a little bit more would be good um, before we go to Boston. We did the minimum. We, did we the minimum. would like put a layer, stick it in the phone, try to scan it. Go to layers, stick it in the phone, try to scan it. Yeah, I might do a couple more layers just to make sure, but that way you can um, put it inside, and you know you can uh, try to keep it away maybe from the uh, from the battery. From the we kind of put it like lower bottom. down, and we had good results there. And and I mean we had to melt away the card so that it would fit inside this really narrow space. Um, but it's yeah. it's flexible. The paper is like not nearly as thick as the. Uh, as the plastic, also another thing is the plastic is on both sides. We only want it. You only need it to be spaced out from the back of the of the battery. Not the so back of the So if phone. you do this project, just experiment a little bit with um, the positioning and how many pieces of packing tape or whatever to yeah. get the scan. Yeah. And uh, and I mean we use some like Charlie cards with no money on them and like. So yeah. Don't don't grab your hundred dollar like monthly pass and do this. Do do it with like and a the, zero dollar. The guy card. in London mentioned that um, they they have rules in. London, I guess, and and I know about the rest London of Europe, but um, where like you have to have your your transit pass uh, like available for inspection. I know this is true on yeah. the German um, bus all the time. Hold this up? No, there's a workaround. Just take a photo of it. So you can take a photo of it, but like, so if you need to like put your card inside the machine to get put money on it and stuff, like the, this the is, Charlie card, it's a it's a it's a tap system. It's just so touching. So honestly, it's good enough for like use your best anything. judgment. Yeah. When you're playing with RFID tags, we also sell the. Um, the MyFair um, tags, tags that, are, uh, that are a card if yeah. you want to experiment with dissolving that one. Yeah. It, okay. won't, it won't give you free uh, passes on the train, but... And no. that was new products. You guys did it. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. It was only already 11 o'clock. Show's over. <laughs> Here's your moment's end. There's a cat now. Okay, just kidding. All right, we're going to just go over just one well, I wanted to show all those cool projects. Yeah. I mean, Becky did all these videos. We have to show Becky videos. Yeah, good. Next week, we'll have to tell September. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you around. guys won't see me at all next week. I'm going to be sleeping. Yeah. Next week, we're probably going to do all questions, or a lot of the questions. We'll probably do just a, a big chunk of Raspberry Pi yeah. stuff, because yeah. people have a lot of questions. I love okay. pie. It is... <laughs> oh, wait. The it's pie not. is a lie. Why do we not have Paul yeah, to eat right now? It's a trivia question time. All right. Okay. What are the rules, Lady Ada? The rules are: um, if you've won a fabulous prize on the Adafruit quiz question, uh, you can't enter this contest. So please sit on your hands, or go type, pay your cat. My favorite thing is be to type into an type empty into an chat, empty uh, chat. Uh, like text window so that yeah. you can play open along up, at no, home. Open up Netbo uh, net, uh, um, Notepad, Notepad or text edit or text edit. Or VI, Play or, or X Emacs, or Ed, yeah. and type into that. But not Emacs. Okay. Type uh, into Emacs only. <laughs> Do right. not type into VI, <laughs> Becky. Um, and then, uh, your, what's the prize? 
Uh, the prize is going to be an Arduino Leonardo. Oh, we get a Leonardo with, with headers. With headers, yeah. awesome for experimenting with uh, USB HID and awesome stuff. You can also the code for my um, the GPS dog collar project will run on the Leonardo. Yes, and if you have a big dog, you can just staple the Leonardo to your dog. <laughs> you have a dog yeah. bigger than mine. Well, it's for VI users okay. like you. Yeah. For your Spanish Mastiff, you can use the, uh, the so Italian Mastiffs are big too. You can it's a They're, really like if big it has a dog. big ears, you can just attach to the ear. I'm just okay. saying there's like 180 pound dogs in Italy. Here it is. This is a question. It's going to be, I'm going to ask the question, type in the answer. In honor of Apollo 11, who was the flight director during the moment the lunar module Eagle landed on the moon, July 20th, 1969? Who was the flight director? Flight director. Is that flight the guy on the ground? Person on the ground. Not Gus Grissom. I'll tell you one thing. He was definitely smoking. <laughs> not Rick smoking, Ashley. <laughs> no. Drinking coffee. Not Chris smoking. Kraft. Not Tom Hanks. Everybody Full name. Oh, got it. Crimson the Third. Gene Krantz. Wow. Congratulations. That was fast. Congratulations. Somebody you win an Arduino the... with headers. Yeah, email support at adafruit.com. Should I go get the kit? Um, yeah, you can, you can go get them if you want. Um, I'll pop in for a second. Someone wanted to know who I am. Hi, I'm Phil. I run the Adabot thing over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Adabot. Yeah. Um, Someone wanted to know what's the cap on tape on the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's tape on the. Oh, there's connectors for like the the mic uh, the camera module, which doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, it basically doesn't exist. Yeah. That's the answer. So, uh, Crimson the Third, please email supportedatafruit.com. Can, hey, can we go to the overhead? I want to show how to, this tape works. It's yeah. Before Becky shows up fast. So you can see there's the LED tape, and then it, there's clear bar tape that goes over it. So this is a really fun project because it's waterproof um, tape and then you put this clear bar tape over it and it, it basically, it's still as comfortable mm -hmm. as like any other bar tape but it's got LEDs in Can it. You switch it to me? Everybody loves LEDs. I found it on Amazon and it's made by Chinelli and it comes in two colors but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This one is the blue one, and then on my bike is the natural one, but like yeah. the LEDs are so bright that it does not matter what color It is a little get. bit more blue. I think the blue one's kind of nice. It's I mean, cool. when it's, it's off, getting, it gives it's it getting it's heavier blue. over time. No, yeah. <laughs> he, he seems to be curious tonight. He's looking all around. Yeah. Okay, so like, that was MOSFET. Well, he doesn't know. He's like, why is Becky here? All why right. is Becky here? Hey, MOSFET. He likes me, though. Special thanks to all the folks from the show and tell. Special thanks, Becky. Oh, hi. Thank That's you. me. George, for doing the recording. Becky. Uh, all the great questions that were, came in tonight. John Janier showed up, our friend. Um, also, uh, uh, Phil, Paint Your Dragon. Oh, was cool. that? Hey, yeah. Um, Phil and Phil. Yeah. Two Phils. And, and uh, Phil. we'll, we'll be back Tyler next, Cooper? we'll be, we'll be ne back next week. Um, we're, in August, we're going to be three years doing Ask an Engineer. That's wow. amazing. Yeah. Longest running live engineering show on the internet. The yeah. only, only. <laughs> right now, yeah, right now right the right only now. one. Only one, I think. Um, and we'll have a ton of questions. Next week um, we'll do questions. We didn't. We had to yeah, catch up we for had two to weeks up. because of Aya. Yeah. And we wanted to give Aya the full hour, and she took it. And because, and because we needed to make you watch all of the videos that I have made recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lynn uh, says hi from uh, Paint Your Dragon World. Oh, yeah, from cool. the, the giraffe. Giraffe. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, one thing that's true if you're an he open, loves LEDs. Yeah, open source hardware oh, Lindsay from makers. The, from the mm -hmm. electric, yeah. electric truck? Yeah, oh, he's, friends with, he's friends with... Uh, that's a good way to solve the problem with, of with like... Silver guys? No, yeah. Yeah, oh, they're yeah. best buds. Yeah, they're good friends. <gasps> that's great. You just want to ride on the giraffe. No, I really <laughs> like Lindsay. Yeah, hi. Okay. Anyway, nice to see you guys. Take care, I everyone. remember seeing the giraffe on the first year I went to Burning Man, and I was just like, that is so cool. It's so cool. It is so cool. Here is... I am the electric giraffe. Your moment of zener. Oof. Good show. And I'll play that with music.